little footage of what I'm going to have to do in order to get my filming area all straightened out. I've got all my inside peppers and this is actually a papaya tree. These are all of my spicy peppers and green peppers that I'm bringing in. There is one of my avocado, I don't know, forest. So let me get all of this uh, straightened out and we'll bring in the worms. Hey guys, it's Anne. Welcome to the channel. Right now we're going to look in on the Red Wiggler Trio. Um, we have been running these bins for probably about six or eight months. I'll put below exactly how far it is. Each one of these bins has been on a different cycle. So the idea of this trio of bins is for them to basically show you what the exact amount, exact same amount of worms in the same amount of area feeding, you know, feeding them the same amount of food and um, how they progress. So let's take a look in on Red Wiggler bin number one. Now it's been a month since you guys have seen this. Um, the video footage that I took last week uh, didn't make it. So we're going to look back in on them and it's only been a little over a week since I've seen them but I thought it would be nice for us to probably see a worm ball if we could. So I'm going to kind of turn things over here and see what the bedding is. I normally run with um, a prepared bedding and I keep it separate just for the red wigglers because when I make my bedding I add a little bit of castings with it and red wiggler cocoons are so tiny and blue worm cocoons are so tiny if I was to use bedding in with if I was to use cocoons nope if I was to use castings in with my bedding that had cocoons from a different species then we wouldn't be having a red wiggler only um, species set of bins to experiment with so that's why they get their own uh, box of bedding. So kind of finding some larger food that's probably older. And um, been doing a lot of processing of tomatoes and stuff, so it wouldn't be surprising to find that I had fed them some tomatoes recently. So let's have a look. I think there was also some apples or pears or something that had gone bad. So let's take a look and see what we have. They seem to have all come over here at the end that was fed. And sort of a worm ball there. That looks good. Good worms. So they're all real healthy. Still wiggly, even though it's probably dropped almost 20 degrees in the basement. Um, so the worms are, I'm not trying to actively migrate them really. Uh, they've, you know, this looks pretty new. You can tell that you can still see the fibers of the coconut coir. A lot of people ask, how do I know when it's done? Uh, that is one of the things that I struggled with at the beginning was, how do you know when the worm bin is done and I should harvest it? Well, that also depends on a couple of different things. Like, um, you know, what are you going for in the way of castings? So for, you know, other bins that I have, I will sift them as I go and get more of a worm compost rather than worm castings. Worm castings is pure worm poop, which is, you know, more concentrated, obviously, than stuff that would still have fibers from the paper or, or other stuff in there. And uh, so basically, I don't usually let mine go all the way to castings, or I try not to because they get very sticky, they're hard to dry, and then I can't sift them. So I usually stop at the worm compost um, stage. I don't know what percentage of castings it is and what percentage of, um, you know, fibers from various things there are, but I would say that it's probably 75 to 80 percent worm castings. So looking over at this side, obviously the worms did move out of, out of this area, which looks a little dry to me. So we're going to get them a nice wet feeding uh, over here. So we'll just kind of utilize the old bedding. Looks like there's enough in there. And we're going to get them some soup stock and just household stuff. So got some, that's eh, not good, tomatoes and banana peels, carrots, avocado, don't know, onion. Kind of give them a decent size feeding right now. They've, they've eaten everything over there. And this is a good combination of fast food and slow food. So you've got the celery and the tomato. I'll break that open so they can get into it easier. You've got a rotten onion, banana peel, and they'll get into things pretty fast. The banana peels 
will go reasonably quick. They're kind of a medium food, but the potato peels are very slow, so we'll probably see them in a month or so. But the tomato will be gone very, very quickly, except for maybe the skin. The celery, this has not been frozen, so this will probably be a longer term food. So I'm going to cover all of this up and make sure that there's no, you know, nothing sticking out that the bugs would want to get into. All right, that is bin number one. Let me grab bin number two. All right, so you can see bin number two looks dramatically different than bin number one. You can tell that this is definitely in migration. And one of the cool things you can see when you get rid of all of the brightly colored paper is all of the cocoons that are on top here. So that's three or four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And that's without even really looking very hard. So it does get easier. I know sometimes when you're a new worm farmer, it's hard to see the cocoons. Uh, in between all of the bedding, but you've got like the brightly colored cocoons that are brand new, and then you've got kind of the caramel color that are uh, probably, oops, there's another one. I'll put them over with the new side. The caramel colored ones are probably ready to hatch, and then the ones that you see that are really dark coffee color have probably already hatched. So I'm just going to skim over this. I know I've been trying to migrate. The cocoons are nuts. Look at that. Wow. They have definitely been happy and breeding in here. So I've still got a fair amount of worms on this side, so the, the migration has not been 100%. But we will keep at it, and uh, the worms kind of know what they're doing. If there's a lot of food left in this side, then they don't leave. Um, you know, it's a worm bin, and I kind of let nature take its course unless I'm really, really, you know, needing the castings right away. Kind of let them follow their own natural process. Uh, let's see, so I'm going to pile these up to try and get the more finished area off to the side. And then we'll look at the, the, the live side or the, the side that I feed on. So I'm going to take off the the dry part here on the top and then maybe we can see what the worms have been doing most recently. Like I said, they've been, they were fed about a week and a half ago, which is the sweet spot for finding really fabulous worm balls. Um, I've been, I'm going to have to reduce the amount of worm bins that I have because I have all the plants in the basement now. So we're going to be reducing the number, not the red wigglers, I think they're fine, uh, but we're going to have to slow down on some of the projects. So we had that one worm ball probably exactly where the food was even though I didn't see what... Oh, here's another worm ball. You can hear them. You hear that? You can hear them all squirming around perfectly happy. I don't see the food though. I don't see anything that tells me what the food was. Um, like I said, I've been canning a lot so it's probably peppers and tomatoes and uh, made, making soup so there's probably celery and carrots and stuff. So we're going to continue to feed on this side because we're trying to migrate them out, but I still think there's enough bedding in here that they'll be fine. So I'm going to dump the rest of this container over here and see if it's enough food. I don't really think it is. I think they may probably need a little bit more. That's mostly just shell of the avocado. So I'll give them a little bit more of the soup peelings over here. And uh, that, these will be pretty slow food. The carrots aren't cooked. This is the end that didn't get cooked. So those might be a little bit slow. So we'll have to see in a couple of weeks what they've, what they've done with this stock. And hopefully the rest of the worms will continue their migration out of um, the area that we'd like to harvest. But this is kind of the slow way letting the worms do all the work for you. Doing a light migration is very labor intensive, very time intensive. And so, you know, unless you really need the castings, there's no need to aggravate yourself and the worms. It's uh, just fine to let them do it on their own, let them do the work. So I'll flatten this out so that it can dry a bit. We're getting into furnace season here pretty quickly. We're in that very short in-between stage now where the air conditioning's not on and the furnace is not on. I probably have a couple of weeks before the furnace kicks on. 
it's just the way it is here in Illinois. It goes from blistering hot to snow. Um, it's one of the weird regions of the country. All right, let me go get bin number three. All right, here we are at bin number three, and it looks uh, quite a bit different than the other two. I am going to take the time to pull out any kind of windows from envelopes that went through while I am here. Um, for, I don't know if they mean to push it up top because it's not something that's useful to them, but it's always helpful to me to pick that off before reincorporating everything. I don't intentionally do windows when we do the shredding, but, you know, life happens sometimes. You just don't know. So let's take a look over here. This looks to be the definitely the more done of the sides here. You can see all of the white speckles from all of the eggshell and and whatnot. Pretty sure those are not mites. Pretty sure that's eggshell. Go through a lot of eggs in the house, so um, I don't usually have too many problems with mites that way where and I don't know what the difference is. I know some people have really bad blooms of them and I can't tell you that I'm really doing anything different than what they are doing. Um, I actually do have my readers on today, so if they were if they were mites, I would be seeing them. Um, sometimes I don't, and I'm just blissfully unaware of, of what it is that I'm looking at here. But, uh, yeah, so I'm not really seeing any pests in here. Uh, I don't use any of the mosquito dunks or anything. I haven't found anything that disturbed me enough to, or at least not lately, enough to uh, require any sort of methods to reduce the insect population. Um, I think once upon a time I did have a lot of mites and I used some neem powder and that did seem to work. I mean it works kind of like the mosquito dunks where it interrupts the reproduction of uh, insects and it doesn't hurt the worms. So I think this must be the side that I fed on here. Yep, oh there we go. We're getting into some new bedding. I had thought about maybe splitting the red wigglers again but this time of year with all the plants in the basement it's just not a good time for me to add more worm bins. So I'm not really seeing a worm ball over here. And I don't have a feeding zone indicator, so um, I, I just have to wing it. I could use a popsicle stick, I just, just don't get around to it. Plus I like, you know, I like to be surprised, you know, unless it's a, a mouse or a spider, in which case I don't like being surprised. So these guys are doing really good. I'm seeing a lot of uh, nice cocoons. Here's one that's really dark. I would bet that would hatch in the next day or two. It's probably down to 70 degrees in the basement here instead of the 80 we had been um, in previous weeks. So I would expect things to slow down, but that's still in the sweet spot for the red wigglers and the European night crawlers. The blue worms will slow down, but I don't think these guys will slow down that much until it gets below 60. But I don't, I don't know, I'm not really trying to migrate these guys. This doesn't look really finished, finished to me. Um, so I'm just going to leave this separate so it doesn't get too wet on me. Um, but other than that, it looks pretty good. I mean, this is just your ye old worm bin. A clear tote that you get from, you know, even the dollar store for like $7 now. Of course, everything's more expensive. When I bought it, it was probably more like 5 or 4 but just clear, there's no holes in this. Uh, I do keep the lids, but I don't have them on tight. Um, I don't have any holes in the lids. I just kind of keep them cocked off to one side to let the air go through. And uh, that seems to work just fine. The worms don't roam. I don't have any problems with worm jerky. And this is just like the simplest system you can use is just ye old, you know, 10 gallon tote with a lid, no holes, no nothing. You just have to watch your moisture and make sure you don't overfeed. Alright guys, well if you're interested in more about the Red Wigglers, I have a playlist that you can go into right over there. And if you've already seen all of that, YouTube thinks you're going to like this video over there. Alright guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms, and everybody have a good day.